Mars, the Red Brother, our celestial neighbour. Named after the Roman god of war, has always been the goal of colonisation since the days that humans purged the veil of our sky. The story of Mars in the alien universe is interesting, to say the least. So let's explore how things progressed for our red neighbour through the many years in the alien universe timeline. Mars is Earth's celestial neighbour and the fourth planet from our host star known as Sol. It lies approximately 228 million kilometres from Sol and the second smallest world in our solar system. The planet has a largely reddish surface on account of the large percentage of iron containing compounds like iron oxide in its crust or surface layers. The planet is 6,779 kilometres in diameter roughly, making it around half the size of Earth and so possesses reduced gravity. The planet is a dust ball of red and orange grains, sands and rocky outcroppings. The planet appears to be a combination of our moon's geology and that of specific locations here on Earth, like valleys, deserts and polar regions. The world is largely devoid of water, however it does exist in sparse quantities along the surface but mostly contained in its uh, polar ice caps at the north and south poles. The planet also has a very weak magnetic field, meaning a lot of radiation is able to find its way to the surface, and solar winds carry away a lot of what used to be a strong and dense atmosphere. There was heavy evidence that life could have once existed on the planet due to how similar ancient Mars likely was to that of Earth. However, since the reduction of its atmosphere, its world has become harsh, cold, and lifeless. Mars was host to two natural satellites, or moons, known as Phobos and Deimos. Phobos was named after the Greek god, son of Ares, whilst Deimos is named after the god Phobos's twin brother. Mars was officially discovered all the way back in the year 1610 by telescopic observations made by Galileo Galilei. However, prior to these events, the planet could be seen as a star in the night sky and was observed in this fashion by many ancient cultures on Earth. By the 20th century, as humanity discovered space travel, so did we seek to uncover the secrets of this world. We sent probes, rovers and other craft to Mars, all starting with the Mariner 4 probe in 1964. It wasn't until the mid 20th century that humans would begin to make their marks on Mars. Humanity, with the aid of Wayland Industries, began the groundwork for full-scale colonisation by establishing solar fields. Large areas compacted with solar panels in order to capture usable energy that could be sold off or even used by the first inhabitants of the planet. The timeline of these events in the alien universe is obscure, however we do know that eventually a colony did develop and begin to thrive. However, there was an ever-present problem of the atmosphere being dismal and the intense solar radiation. To help combat this, Wayland Industries and Earth's government dropped a number of nuclear devices in order to melt the atmospheric gases frozen at the poles of Mars and across the planet. This helped kickstart the greenhouse effect of Mars and begun to warm the planet, from sub-zero temperatures to a more comfortable, humanly friendly atmospheric condition. In addition, Wayland Industries established one of their new atmospheric processes to help the process along. Eventually though, the government known as the Three World Empire took control of the planet and established an operations headquarters in the colony established by Wayland Industries known as the Bailey's Colony. The processor for the atmosphere there allowed for similar conditions to Earth to be created whilst also producing O3, or what is otherwise known as ozone. This compound absorbs a large percentage of solar radiation, meaning that the surface of the world is spared from the full hit of radiation that it would usually be receiving. This led to the world becoming fully habitable for human populations. A space station was also constructed in orbit around the planet, with its use largely being unknown to us due to the lack of information surrounding it. By the closing years of the 21st century, there existed around 20 million colonists on the planet Mars. 
and in the year 2089, on the 5th of May, it was reported that founder and CEO of Wayland Industries, Sir Peter Wayland, had died on the orbital station of renal failure. Little though did the public know that this was a staged death, to allow him to take part in the highly important Prometheus expedition. Unfortunately, the heating of the planet's surface due to the increased atmospheric density brought with it something unexpected. It was revealed to the unsuspecting colonists of Mars that an ancient species of large insect-like creatures had been living beneath Mars' surface. They likely thrived on the surface many thousands of years ago, when the world was ripe with a living habitat and were driven underground as Mars lost its surface sustainability. However, humanity had restored that which had been lost, and now the creatures had risen up to take back their world from the invaders. The exact date of this event is not known, however it is likely something that occurred once the newer and larger atmospheric processes were established after the year 2100. After this, the establishment of the colonial marines occurred, and it became regular practice for grunts or new additions to the marines to serve their first service on the planet Mars. It was a great way to train them into fine soldiers, and also doubled as pest control, with the marines being the first line of defence against the native species onslaught, as they attempted to retake the surface of Mars from the human population there. Notable Marines such as Zula Hendricks and Alec Brand both served their first tour of duty on Mars, fighting the insect hordes. After the Three World Empire took control of the planet from Wayland Industries, Wayland Jutani, after the merger, slowly lost their grip of the planet. However, at least until 2183, Wayland Jutani maintained officers on the planet and constructed a weapons testing facility on the Martian moon of Phobos. That's essentially everything we know about Mars through the alien timeline. When or if we ever get any more information about this world, I'll be sure to make an updated video to make sure we are all kept in the know of the alien canon. Before I go, I just wanted to let you guys know about the merch store called Acheron's Colonial Marketplace. Here, you can pick up a variety of Acheron and alien themed merch from three distinct product lines including shirts, hoodies, mugs, blankets, stickers, bags, and even phone cases. So if you want to support the channel and look good doing it, pick up some Acheron merch. But what other videos would you guys like to see? If you have any ideas or have any questions you would like answered, please meet me down in the comments. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like and go check out Project Acheron on Twitter and Discord. If you want to support me further, you can become a patron where you can get access to early and behind the scenes content the monthly and alien day giveaways, as well as the patron only engraved set of items. I hope you guys did enjoy the video and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Until then, this is Project Acheron, signing off.